Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. It's April, which means it is once again Oral Cancer Awareness Month. The absolute front line against the fight against oral cancer is the thorough and complete head and neck exam. This exam should be performed at least once a year, if not at every routine dental appointment. In this video, I'll show you how I approach the head and neck exam. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. With that being said, let's take a look at how I approach the head and neck exam. You've got Karen here helping me out. We're gonna do a head and neck exam. The number one thing that is the most important for a head and neck exam is that it's yours. So you wanna make sure that you're doing the same thing every single time. You want it to be kind of second nature, that you don't even have to think about what you're doing, that you have a routine so that you don't miss any areas. So I'm gonna walk you through what I do for my head and neck exam. I always tell the patient what to expect so that they know exactly what I'm doing and they aren't caught off guard or they aren't nervous. It also helps calm their nerves a little bit. So I'll say to the patient, I'm gonna do a thorough head and neck exam. I'm gonna check everywhere outside and inside, looking at the skin of your face, as well as feeling alongside your neck, looking for any lymph nodes or any lumps and bumps. Let me know if anything is tender. So then I start, I lean the patient back. I like to do my head and neck standing, but you can also do it seated. And I start behind the right ear. It's important to look behind the ear because it's often an area that is missed. And I have some colleagues in the profession that have actually caught some skin cancers back there. So you may be the only person looking behind the ear and it's an important place to look. So I tell the patient, I'm gonna start behind your right ear so that they know that I'm going to start the exam. I check behind the ear. And while I'm here, I like to think about the head and neck exam as a spiral. So I start from the outside and slowly work my way inside towards the mouth. So I start behind the ear and then I feel along the sternocleidomastoid where a lot of the lymph nodes like to live. And I do this bimanually, meaning two hands on either side of the muscle. It's helpful to have the patient turn just like Karen's doing for me to the other side because it it emphasizes that muscle and will push any lumps or bumps out towards you. I then have the patient look straight up and I go towards the middle of the neck, again by manually feeling the thyroid gland. Sometimes it's helpful to have the patient swallow because that moves the thyroid gland and you can feel for any nodules. We're gonna continue on our spiral over to the other side, have the patient look to the right and again, up and down that sternocleidomastoid feeling for any tender lumps or bumps and behind the ear. We continue with our spiral looking at the skin of the forehead. And you'll notice that I'm leading with my fingers to feel any irregularities. I then go in towards the cheek and I check the eyelids. Go ahead and open your eye for me. And I pull down on the eyelid. I continue to the other eyelid and then the other cheek. The eyelids are important because any inflammation of the eyelid might uh, imply that there's inflammation inside the oral cavity as well. Checking up the nose for any crusts, and then finally the lips and the skin around the lips. I always change my gloves uh, between the extra oral exam and the intraoral exam. This was something that was taught to me by one of my mentors at Ohio State, Dr. Chris Harrington. I'll give her a shout out because no one really wants the oils from outside of their face inside their mouth. So I switch my gloves and we'll get started with the intraoral exam. Now intraoral, rather than being a spiral, I like to think about it as a front to back. So that's how I do my intraoral exam is front to back. So the first thing I start with, go ahead and open and close a little bit, is the lower lip, feeling with my finger and taking a look as well. It's helpful when you have the patient open, go ahead and open. If they open, open a little bit wider. If they open wide, it's hard to get a good look at what we're seeing here. But if you have them close a little bit, you'll notice that I get all of this extra, uh, extra give to the tissue. 
I then look at the upper, again starting outside in. Look at the upper lip as well. Now I'm looking at the cheeks, the next step inside. Go ahead and open. I start with the left cheek and I illuminate it with my mirror and I feel with a finger for any irregularities. Go ahead and turn your head towards me. I then, again, with the mirror and feel there. Next, we're gonna look at the external gingiva. Go ahead and bite together, the buccal slash labial gingiva. And I warn the patient I'm gonna be pulling, you're kind of just pulling back the mucosa. I then run a finger on the outside, feeling for any irregularities. Now, go ahead and open. Now I'm gonna look at the inside gingiva, starting with the palate. I use my mirror to illuminate my palate. Yeah, not great ergonomics, but that is what it is. Uh, it's temporary. I feel the palate with my finger, and then I check the lingual gingiva, making sure that I get really deep down in there. The posterior uh, retromolar pad can be difficult to visualize, so it's important to kind of push the tongue out of the way with your mirror. I then have the patient stick their tongue out and say, ah, ah. perfect. That way I can visualize the soft palate as well as the anterior oropharynx. And then I get my gauze cushion ready and have the patient stick their tongue right out onto the gauze. Go and stick it all the way out and I tell them to relax it. Now tense it up really hard. When it's tensed, it's very hard to kind of get a, a hold of it. So I'll say, go ahead and relax your tongue. And then I pull it to the side so that I can visualize as far back as I can. And I feel with my finger just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then I do the other side. Now, one thing that's often forgotten is I just covered the anterior tongue with this gauze. So I remove the gauze and now I check the anterior tongue, feeling with my fingers as well as looking with my eyes. And I finish up with floor of the mouth. Additional things, depending on the chief complaint, intraorally, I might choose to dry off the parotid papilla and then milk a little bit of saliva out on either end. If the patient is talking about uh, possible dry mouth symptoms, there we got a nice right there. And then on the floor of the mouth, sometimes I'll look at the sublingual caruncles under the tongue where the submandibular gland empties and we can see that saliva is readily pooling there. In addition, I don't treat TMJ, but a lot of times a head and neck exam will include a TMJ exam. Go ahead and open and close very slowly. So I'm both looking at the line of opening and closing and also feeling the joint which lies directly in front of the ear. So go ahead and open again. You're feeling for clicks and pops, go ahead and close. and. Clicks and pops are pretty common. Uh, as long as a patient's asymptomatic, then, then it's not a big deal. So that is how I do a head and neck exam. It's really important that you're doing this for this patient. Uh, doing a head and neck exam is really the front line for any oral pathology, especially this being Oral Cancer Awareness Month. There you have it. That's how I approach a head and neck exam, and I do this every time I see a patient. And I encourage every other oral healthcare provider to do so as well. You never know what you'll find, and you may just end up saving someone's life. Thanks again to Karen, my assistant in Manhattan, for helping me out, and to Lauren, my camera woman, for this video. If you want to check out more of my Oral Cancer Awareness Month videos, I put them in a convenient playlist, which I will link in the description below. I hope that you found this video helpful and can take what you learned back into practice, or if you're a patient, you can even do this check at home. If you think someone else will find this helpful, be sure to share it with them and consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching and be well.